Mass Effect Andromeda will be about, funnily enough, the Andromeda Galaxy, but as we approach the release of the game next year, there's still so many questions that we have about the plot, and personally, I'd love to know more about the arcs and how we'll be getting to the Andromeda Galaxy. Hi, this is Rima from Emmy Odyssey, and today I'm going to be looking at the science of interstellar travel and seeing if any real-world theories on interstellar travel can shed some light on how the arcs will work. Before we even start talking about the science of interstellar travel, it's important to define what it is, to avoid confusion. Interstellar travel is, quote, the term used for hypothetical piloted or unpiloted travel between stars or planetary systems. Though, what is important for Mass Effect Andromeda is the ability to conduct intergalactic travel, the ability to travel between galaxies, interstellar travel gives an idea of how plausible it would be to travel between the Milky Way and Andromeda Galaxy. Before we look at what technology is available in the Mass Effect universe to facilitate interstellar travel, let's look at some of the current scientific theories about how we may be able to travel long distances in space in the future and see if that gives us any inspiration for what we might see in Mass Effect Andromeda. Probably the simplest concept in this list and the imagery we see in classic sci-fi movies is the idea that we can use some form of advanced propulsion to have extended spaceflight under the speed of light. But to be more specific, this form of propulsion utilizes nuclear pulse propulsion. So what is nuclear pulse propulsion? Well, the basic definition is, quote, a hypothetical method of spacecraft propulsion that uses nuclear explosions for thrust. And it was first seen utilized within Project Orion, a US project that was developed in the 1950s to 1960s. It was named after the Greek figure Orion the Hunter, who was involved in many Greek tales, including the Odyssey. Theorizing it was more efficient than chemical rockets, theorizing it would take approximately 90 years to travel to Alpha Centauri, our sun's closest solar neighbor, at 5% of the speed of light, it was also thought to be cheaper than chemical rockets. Though there is some debate about how accurate the research was, there are some strong supporters for the project, including Arthur C. Clarke, Nobel Prize winner Niels Bohr, and Carl Sagan, who even suggested that Project Orion would be a good way to dispose of the world's nuclear weapons safely. However, with the Nuclear Test Ban Treaty of 1963 and the Outer Space Treaty of 1967, it saw the usage of nuclear devices in space banned, preventing the project from moving any further. Further projects such as Project Daedalus, Medusa, Project Longshot and various others have been looked into utilizing nuclear pulse propulsion, the most promising being MCF, Magnetic Confinement Fusion, that would use helium-3 and deuterium as fuel. The project theorized to reduce travel time to Alpha Centauri to 40 years. Probably one of the most popular concepts for the arcs for Mass Effect Andromeda is the concept of a generational ship, and it's also a popular theory for interstellar travel in real life. A large colony ship has always been prominent in science fiction, dating back to the mid-20th century. A great example of a habitat of a generational ship is seen in the Stanford Taurus, a proposed design by Stanford University for a NASA project in 1975. It takes on the design of a ring-shaped space station rotating, creating artificial gravity. The design also suggests using mirrors to replicate the sun's cycle. Images of the design look eerily like the Citadel and the concept art for Mass Effect Andromeda, as well as the rotating rings of the Ark. How long we would have to stay on a generational ship would obviously be dependent on the destination, but there's also been suggested ways of how we could sustain a crew, including biospheres, cryostasis, and even the concept of egg ships, or in other words, transporting cryopreserved human embryos. Other than the fact that generational ships may be too technologically advanced for us right now, some have also suggested that living aboard a generational ship can also have mental and physical effects on the body. Other than the issue of cosmic rays and varying degrees of gravitational stresses, it's also been suggested that social breakdown is a very likely factor on a generational ship, with morality, hierarchy and resources all becoming an issue within the population. Though not as popular as other methods on this list, it's still a good concept. Interstellar space isn't completely empty, from solar systems, asteroids in the Oort cloud, and rogue planets. The concept is that while travelling through space, the ships can temporarily land or orbit around these bodies to gather materials or even create settlements. Though extending the mission time, it allows you to gather materials as you travel. Now, we've only covered some of the theories for interstellar travel. We haven't even delved into theories for faster than light travel, wormholes and magnetic sails, and the current projects that are currently ongoing. Examples include the 100-year Starship and Project Hyperion. Yes, 
Hyperion by Icarus Interstellar. Mass Effect is a game set within the stars, so hence it would just be assumed that there would be some form of in-game tech that would allow for interstellar travel. And there is. Traveling between the stars is something quite often seen in Mass Effect, but between galaxies, well, that's a different case. Fast and the light travel is established in Mass Effect, allowing for ships to travel great distances within the Milky Way. However, this utilizes the relay system, a system created by the Reapers that basically slingshot ships across vast distances, but is dependent on having a relay system, therefore meaning a relay can't slingshot anything without having another relay to receive. And for now, we don't have any relays in any other galaxies, making the ability to jump to Andromeda unfeasible, meaning we may have to rely on other means of interstellar travel. So do any species have the ability to travel great distances? The Reapers are probably the most advanced race in the current Mass Effect universe, with their estimated speed being about 30 light years per 24 hours, being about twice as fast as the fastest Citadel ship. To show how fast that is, Alpha Centauri, which we've discussed earlier, is about 4.3 light years away, with a distance of 25 trillion miles away from Earth. With Reaper tech, you could make that trip in about 3.5 hours. That's a crazy thought, as well as the fact that Reapers don't have the issue of drive discharge, which makes Reaper tech fairly durable. We've also covered the virtual aliens in a really old lore video a while back, which you can check out by clicking the link on the screen now. But the really interesting thing about the virtual aliens is about how long they've been traveling. There isn't much about the codex about how fast they are, but their tech is very, very cool. Facing imminent destruction 8,000 years prior to the events of Mass Effect 2, these aliens created a ship that housed their race in a virtual world and was protected by an advanced AI. 8,000 years of traveling the Milky Way and sourcing energy and maintaining an arc, basically, that's tech that would be very, very useful to Andromeda. The interesting idea is that utilizing things in Mass Effect that are already established, for example, advanced FDL and other tech such as cryogenics. Maybe by combining the two, we could achieve intergalactic travel in Mass Effect Andromeda. Interstellar travel is elusive in the real world. We do not have the tech to allow us to travel between the stars and planets. But even in Mass Effect, with the ability to travel distances unconceivable in reality, traveling to a distant galaxy is still a huge feat. Maybe the Arcs will utilize some of the real world theories, a generational ship, or island hopping, or maybe we won't see any of that. Maybe we'll luck into a different method, a conveniently placed wormhole, or even an advanced relay system in Andromeda. Whatever the means, I'm very excited to see how we'll make it to the Andromeda Galaxy because not only does that give us some more lore to delve into, but also gives us inspiration. In a world where we keep looking into the stars, it's just exciting to reach the Andromeda Galaxy, even if it's in a fictional world like Mass Effect. So what are your thoughts on interstellar travel in Mass Effect and have you read up on any other projects currently undergoing about how we might actually one day make it further into the stars? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and please share this video to help the channel grow. Thank you so much for joining me as we explore a little science and I look forward to seeing you next time.